Yeah, so um, good evening, everyone. My name is you know, Mac Morris, um, and I'm going to be talking about different opportunities for funding your um, uh, study abroad. Um, I'm an intern with Education USA Kazakhstan, and I'm also, like Rashawn mentioned, a graduate assistant at Troy University. So um, I'm going to be talking about graduate assistantships, which is something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be in graduate school now if it wasn't for my graduate assistantship. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about the different types of graduate assistantships, you know, how to find them, their benefits, what are they, um, even like what schools offer these different types of graduate assistantships. Um, next, kind of outside scholarships, I'm gonna be talking about certain um, like databases or places to search for um, specific scholarships. Um, university scholarships, kind of like how to go about finding university scholarship. And lastly, some helpful websites um, and advice to give you all. This presentation, you know, we'll go right into our next two presentations um, where there'll be, you know, obviously have an international um, recruiter um, come and talk and present, um, answer some of your questions. And also um, next week will be some other GAs, um, TAs on, you know, in graduate school and they're gonna come and offer maybe a different perspective on uh, these opportunities than I can. So to begin, you know, graduate assistantships, uh, they can consider just kind of part-time jobs that offer the, offer the opportunity to go to graduate school uh, for free. Um, graduate assistantships, uh, graduate assistants usually work 20 hours a week uh, which is good in the case of um, international students. This is the maximum number of hours that international students can work um, during a week. Um, and they offer financial assistance and professional uh, ex experience. Financial assistance, um, very obvious, you know, they cover tuition and give you a monthly stipend, but also professional experience, especially if you can get a GA position in the field of um, your program, like your program study. For example, if you are majoring in some type of agriculture, getting a research assistantship um, where you have to deal with this kind of hands-on agriculture research would be a great opportunity. Look really good on your resume for a future job, but also for if you want to go on to a PhD um, program as well. Um, like I mentioned, it covers tuition and has a monthly stipend. Um, so that's what, and this amount is um, cut, is uh, determined by the university. Um, so my position covers two classes, which is considered uh, full time for graduate students, and also offers like a six hundred dollar stipend a month. So some benefits um, for um, graduate assistantships, um, like I said, little or no tuition. A monthly stipend that you can use towards maybe the tuition, a little tuition that's left, or live cost of living expenses. A big one um, is legal income for international students. Unfortunately, international students aren't allowed to work, um, are not allowed to work off campus, um, at least not right away when they come to the United States. So this is offers offers you know legal income, and also it's the highest paying um, on campus student job. I mean, there are a lot of student jobs as such as like workshops um, that are 15 and 20 hours per week, but they don't pay as much as GA um, positions. Looks great on a resume, like I mentioned. Um, a lot of PhD programs maybe require or prefer a candidate who has been a GA before, um, had some type of experience in the program they're going into. For example, I'll be talking about uh, research assistantships um, or teaching assistantships. If you were a teaching, if you were teaching assistantship with maybe certain English classes, um, this may look really good and be required by a PhD program in, in English. Um, professional experience, just give you some professional experience working um, and the career, uh, the workforce and networking opportunities. This one I'm very passionate about. And you'll hear me mention networking a few times during this presentation because um, 
I wouldn't know about this opportunity now. I wouldn't be speaking now if it wasn't for my um, GA position and networking in there. Um, my coworker sent me, you know, I guess the um, this information for this program uh, to be an um, intern with Education USA. Um, and I knew this is something I could take advantage of and would um, propel my career. So graduate assistantships, eligibility and requirements. These are just some kind of general um, requirements and eligibility I'll go over. Um, specific positions, um, they'll have their own type of eligibility and requirements. Um, first off, um, you know, they're very competitive. So, you know, these requirements matter. You wanna be in good academic standing during your undergraduate experience. And I guess this also applies to your graduate experience if you're applying um, for one uh, maybe after you've been enrolled in graduate school for a semester or two. So you want to be in good academic standing. Um, the good academic standing is usually, you know, minimum of 3.0 uh, GPA on a 4.0 grading scale. So this is a B average. Also enrolled in a certain amount of classes. Um, universities, you know, since they do cover, for example, two classes, you'll need to be enrolled in maybe two or three classes or be considered full-time by that university. Um, and each university is a little different on how many classes they allow you to roll in. The good thing is um, two classes um, is considered uh, full-time for um, graduate school. For international students, adhere to the university's international department guidelines. And what I mean by this is, you know, you can't work off campus. Um, International students are actually supposed to take, um, you know, nine hours, three classes, but since they, if they are a GA, they can take, you know, six because they're working that extra um, 20 hours to kind of accommodate for that. So that's kind of a benefit uh, as GA positions as well. And the position may have their own um, specific requirements. And this just kind of means like what, um, like when you're applying for a job, you know, depending where you apply for, they're going to have specific requirements that they want out of um, their workers. So first off, there's the graduate administrative assistant. This is what I am. Um, they provide administrative support to faculty, staff, and students throughout a specific department on campus. So Common places these are located are and like uh, the career services, center for national programs, it's, that's where I'm at. Um, housing office, computer labs, uh, registers office, these support services departments that every university has. Um, and these are gonna be common at all universities because all universities have these departments. Specifically, I think, um, I would think, you know, if you're planning on majoring in more of the helping profession, like for me, counseling, um, this gave me a competitive advantage when applying for these positions um, because these are, you know, helping students, helping, you know, positions. So this definitely will give you a competitive advantage. Next, there's the graduate um, teaching assistant. Um, teach undergraduate classes in the field of the degree or um, other degree or uh, assistantship. So what this means is if you are, uh, let's say getting your master's in physics, uh, maybe you will help a physics um, professor um, teach his classes. So you'll help, you know, proctor exams, prepare course materials, setting up labs. Um, a lot of PhD programs, if you plan on going and pursuing like a PhD require, um, may require or give an advantage to people um, who were a, a TA, uh, graduate teaching assistant. Um, these are gonna be common at all universities um, because all universities teach. The only experience I've ever had with a TA is um, classes that are very large so during my freshman year of undergraduate, I took a class that maybe had like 200 people in it. And obviously, you know, one uh, teacher, I guess, relaying all the information to all those students, you know, things get lost in translation. It's very difficult to teach all them. 
So there were maybe two, um, like two TAs, teaching assistants in that class that kind of helped us, you know, follow along with the professor. Um, if we had any questions, we could ask them because obviously, you know, if like a, even like a small percentage at 200 had questions for the professor, it's very hard for her to answer everything in the time period of the class. So that's a lot of what, you know, teaching assistants um, do. Graduate research assistant, this one, um, along with the TA are a lot more specific than just the graduate administrative assistant. So they're gonna support faculty in research initiatives. Um, they also plan and direct certain parts of a research project. Um, and I put here mostly open uh, to STEM majors. So mostly, um, for example, if you're majoring in um, non-STEM degrees, for example, counseling or psychology, um, music, you know, there's not going to be many research assistant positions um, in those fields because there's not as many research um, endeavors. And that's what I also mean by um, hard sciences. Um, so, you know, physics, biology, chemistry, and not really, you know, psychology, uh, philosophy, um, counseling, um, those type of majors. And these are going to be most common at your research universities. Um, and the way, I, and just a quick um, overview to, I guess, determine if a university re is a research university. A lot of times, you know, if it has an A, like A and M after the name, it's, you know, a research um, university. Um, a and M standing for agriculture and uh, mechanics. So, for example, like Texas A and M is a really, um, large one. Oh yeah, and one thing also I forgot to mention, um, where I'm from, there is a, like a large university called Auburn University. It's a large research university that does a lot of research in agriculture. So this is where you're gonna find a lot of research um, assistantships. You won't find these um, really at universities like mine where there's not as much research um, endeavors um, going on. So finding a graduate assistantship, this is quite a lot of information on um, ways to go about finding one. So the first is, you know, grad in your graduate school application and or I guess your scholarship. So in your graduate school application, you know, there might be somewhere in there where it asks you um, if you're willing, if you're interested in a GA position, a teaching, a teaching assistant, research assistant um, position. And then if you do um, and answer yes, it may pr uh, prompt you to maybe submit like a short essay about why you would be a good fit, why this is interesting to you. Also, if you do receive a scholarship, you know, from the university, a university scholarship, they may, it may require you to, you know, teach um, be a TA, um, which is teaching assistant, research assistant, um, or, you know, graduate administrative assistant as well. Networking is key. Um, this also, this applies for when students, um, are actually at the university and looking for a J position, or even you can do this, um, before you come, because not everyone has the opportunity to come here and then look for a, um, J position. So I, I recommend, you know, contacting the university's, uh, counselors and recruiters. Every university has, um, specific um, staff members that are there to help, um, to help international students get admitted, um, answer their questions, um, and that's what they're paid to do. And they're willing to help. The people at my university, I work right next door to all of them. And one of them is gonna come on in you know, a couple of weeks and talk. Um, they're there to answer questions and they're just a wealth, of informa uh, a wealth of knowledge. They know a lot of things and they can kind of prompt you or. I guess point you or help you in the direction that you need to go to find one of these opportunities. Next is um, your home university's uh, professors. For example, maybe you had a professor from your university back home who's maybe done one of these opportunities or has you know studied in the United States, um, and they could help you kind of make these contexts or where you need to go, what you need to look at, how should you go about this. Um, departments, faculty, and staff, 
every university has a uh, what's the word? Well, a directory where you can find out, you know, who who's a professor in what department, um, what their job title is, and their contact information. So reaching out to them, um, reaching out to them, you know, inquiring about, you know, different opportunities. Are these opportunities available at your university? So on. Um, also, you know, asking about these uh, positions um, before you maybe see them open, like on the financial aid website, job board, or whatever. Um, maybe, it maybe um, can build a competitive advantage because you know they might not be open yet, but they know they're going to be open in the future. For example, these are student positions, and students graduate, um, and they're not always posted um, before you know. They're not always posted after students graduate. Um, so maybe you can find these open positions before they are available. Next, um, the university's human resource uh, website. This is how I found my position and how my university does things um, is on, it's just posted like a job opening would be. The universe, I mean, the position, you know, location, um, job responsibilities, eligibility requirements, so on. And you go through this and apply. Um, the only issue is, you know, maybe if you are a student um, back in Kazakhstan, you may have um, issues, I guess, accessing this application because you're not initially, you don't have an account, you're not really a student yet. Um, so this is why, you know, contact the human resource department. A lot of times they give kind of, they give, I guess, a general password account um, to users so they can go and apply for these positions. Um, university's financial aid, aid website, this is where you kind of find scholarships and they also might have, you know, GA scholarship, something um, along those lines. They also could be po um, posted on the specific college's website. Um, the specific college meaning like the specific program. Um, as for example, at my university, it's Troy University, but I'm specifically in the College of Education. So I could search Troy University College of Education and that could be its own website within the main uh, Troy University uh, website. I guess more like maybe a web page. They could be posted on there as, as well. Um, next, the university's Career Center. Every university has, you know, a career center. That's main purpose is usually to get a job um, once you graduate from the school, but they can also help you um, when you're at the school finding a GA position um, as well. Um, job boards, the biggest two, the two biggest ones are LinkedIn and Handshake. Um, if you're not on LinkedIn, I highly encourage you getting on. It's a great way um, to search for job openings. You can even find you know, GA positions that are open at um, certain universities. Handshake is kind of the same thing, but it's for the, for the specific school. You, you're able to find these, uh, once you're enrolled, um, find these positions um, within the school as well. There are a lot of other job boards, um, but these are the two I trust the most. Um, there are a lot of other ones that maybe just have something um, posted. Um, and I, I don't think they're necessarily um, trustworthy, trustworthy. Really finding a graduate assistantship, especially before you come, is just a really a, a balancing act. Um, I think maybe next week I'll have some students on who, who completed this. Um, and you just kind of have to, they just provided proof of their um, acceptance to the university along with their application. This helped them, um, this helped them, uh, I guess, gain a acceptance and a GA position at the same time. So, you know, applying for a graduate assistantship, I just added this to kind of show you what they um, usually want if you're applying like you would a job on the job, the human resource website. Um, much like you're applying for graduate school, you know, application, letters of recommendation, um, cover letter, your interest uh, statement, why you're interested in that position. And like I said, it might, it might give you, um, possibly will give you a competitive advantage if you're applying for 
um, these positions that are related to your program. Um, next, you know, resume. Um, they, you must submit your resume. Will also, you know, help you build your resume for the future. Um, transcript, relevant works, references, um, and so on. So some outside scholarships. I only added one specific scholarship, which, um, excuse my pronunciation, the uh, Bolashok scholarship. You know, that's the, I guess, Kazakh government scholarship for um, getting a graduate degree. And I embedded the link here. So when the presentation um, is over, I can go back and we can, um, I can show you this website and we can kind of navigate through it. The same thing with the rest of these embedded links. Also, EDU Pass um, is a great database to search for scholarships for international students. And also, it's not only just scholarship, it has a lot of information um, that inter international students need to know when um, studying in the United States. Um, immigration, insurance, um, you name it, they have all this information. Also, internationalstudent.com um, is a great database to search for international scholarships. Um, and also this is, and they also provide a lot of information, helpful information for international students. This is actually where how the international department at my university provides interns through this uh, website. So, I mean, they have a whole bunch of information and things to know about studying in the United States. Next, Career One Stop is actually a program or a website developed by the US Department of State is really helpful for searching for um, scholarships. The only thing I'll mention is, you know, these scholarships usually have a lot, are very specific, um, have a lot of, um, I guess, details that you have to meet requirements, uh, but there's a lot of them out there. That's why I said there's a scholarship for everyone, it just needs to be found. It just takes time to find the right scholarship um, because there's a lot out there um, for diversity, academics, uh, community service. Um, so you may be eligible for um, any of these. There's a lot of information. University scholarships. Unfortunately, I didn't add a lot of information about university scholarships, but I added, you know, like I mentioned, you know, networking is key. So where to find these university scholarships, who to reach out to. And like I mentioned in two weeks, um, there's gonna be someone on here that knows a, a lot more about specific university scholarships um, than me, and they can help answer any of your questions you may have. So first, you know, the university financial aid website. This is usually where the scholarships are posted. University graduate school, um, reaching out to them may help. Um, University and International Admissions Office, they may help as well. Thing to keep in mind, there are usually in the international department at universities, there are two um, separate, I guess, staff. Um, there's your student services staffs, um, which is kind of what I am. These are the people who help you once you get admitted uh, to the university, but they also the admission staff that help you come to the university. Next, departments, faculty, and staff. Um, this is really helpful. I know of a student who was from, a graduate student who was from Brazil, who was able to contact, um, had network with a um, economics professor, someone in the economics department, and get added on as a, um, like an economic uh, research assistant, something they were doing over in that department. Um, and this, you know, so he had the GA position the whole time he was here. So some helpful um, resources and advice. The advice is just, I had here so I can remember it. Um, so at first, you know, like I mentioned, alignment between your graduate assistantship and program of study may create a competitive advantage. For example, my uh, master's is in student affairs counseling. So when I applied for my graduate um, assistantship, 
I had a competitive advantage. For example, if you are applying for uh, linguistics or physics, maybe you will have a competitive advantage if you're applying for a teaching, um, a uh, teaching assistantship in those fields. Um, next, watch out for fees and cost for living. So this is where universities kind of get you with the fees is your scholarship. Um, these fees aren't necessarily included in the tuition. So your scholarship is not necessarily covering them. And these fees could be like, if you have a class that um, is in a lab, a lab fee, um, these certain little fees that are just kind of tacked on, maybe they're like $25, $50, but they add up. Um, that's why I said the GA position uh, could cover your tuition and this could leave you with a little, a little bit of cost um, to spend as well that you'd have to use your stipend to pay off. Cost of living, also something to um, pay attention to when you're coming and studying at university. Um, cost of living is not always the same. Some places are a lot more expensive um, than other, um, other places. So factor this in when you're looking at the scholarship, um, how much that scholarship is, is that scholarship, even though it's more, maybe that area of the United States is more expensive to live um, compared to maybe a scholarship that's at a university, but the cost of, a scholarship's less, but the cost of living is also less. So just keep this in mind when you're searching, um, not just for the scholarship, but also you know the university where it is. Um, U.S. Uh, news scholarship for international students, and let, that's just uh, an article I found that's really helpful for um, international students to kind of pro go through the process of finding um, scholarships, applying for them, where to where to look. And edu pass, internationalstudent.com, Bullshock, and the Career One Stop. That's what I talked about. Um, you know, earlier searching for these outside, um, outside scholarships. And let me see if I can open the EDU Pass um, website and I can show it to y'all because I believe it's really helpful. Um, it'll really help students um, to find a uh, scholarship. Yeah, so can everyone see the EDU uh, PASS website? Yeah. Let me see if I can open, yeah, open the chat. Sorry, I know some people have been asking questions. I just haven't um, answered them yet. Yeah, so, um, I'll, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to your question. Um, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, so EDU Pass, you know, they have a lot of information about getting into um, college, paying for college. This is where I found the uh, scholarships, immigration, living, um, culture differences. And this is probably going to talk about your um, cost of living differences. You know, certain areas of the United States, it's more expensive than others. Um, so let's say if we click on immigration to the US. I'm um, sorry, paying for college. Um, hmm. Yeah, you see, you'll hear a lot of articles about studying, but let me find, there is a database you can search. Um, hmm. it is, it is here a database that you can search for, um, certain scholarships that are offered in the United States for, um, studying abroad. Um, and let me see if I can pull up the other, uh, internationalstudent.com. Yeah, so like here, it's going to have a lot of information about resources. Um, here, international um, financial aid. Um, 
information about international um, student loans, international scholarship search. This is what I was talking about um, that all these websites offer. Um, and it's free and you, you just need to create like a um, account. And these are, it's a website that I trust. There are a lot of websites where you can search for scholarships and apply to scholarships through, but I don't necessarily trust them. I usually trust things um, that, you know, you know .gov.edu. So look for that when you're looking for these different um, websites to search for scholarships. So here, it's just a quick search, you know, where are you, uh, what are you studying? You know, where you're studying? Where are you from? What are you studying? It might break down the scholarships into, um, you know, the civic departments, programs. If you're studying English education, put this in and it might off show English education scholarships. Where are you uh, studying? Where are you from? It might break down the scholarships into like, as you see here, what nationality you're from. Certain scholarships may be available to certain um, to certain uh, nationalities as well. And the same thing um, can be said for um, career one stop. Okay, let me see if I can get to the Yeah, and someone asked someone um, to get to the um, questions. Yeah. Um, so assistantships are when you work um, on campus and they pay you money. Does it cover the entire cost of one year of study? It's hard to receive. Um, so is it available to those uh, um, just entering the bachelor's degree? So to answer your last question, um, that no, it's not um, available for those um, just entering their bachelor's degree. It's just available for master's, um, PhD um, students. But like I mentioned, you know, here if you want to search for um, different scholarships, this is a great um, website to start from, or and just start reaching out to your university and those recruiters. Um, but also, like I mentioned, there are a, a whole bunch of on-campus jobs um, for students. Um, and international students can't work off campus so um, legally. Um, so this is a great op it's a great opportunity to work on campus. Um, only issue is is they don't pay as much and cover tuition like the GA positions do. Um, next, you know, may I use a recommendation that I use for admission to the university? Or should I write a new one? I always recommend, you know, writing a new one and tailoring it to that specific um, job position university. Um, I know this is um, takes ex extra effort, but it'll pay off in the long run. And by who should this recommendation should be written? I just recommend someone that's um, all this not family or friends, someone who won't be biased someone who is in that field of study, for example, if you're applying for a GA position in um, physics, maybe having your undergraduate physics professor um, write the letter. Someone who just knows um, how you work, um, knows things about you that you want the university to know. Yeah, so I mean, it's possible for a master of students to get a assistantship. I'm just a master student. Um, there are, you know, certain opportunities that are offered or that are reserved for PH students. Um, these might be a lot of your research assistants um, posi um, positions because these are very specific, including research, working with a professor, um, really working really closely with a professor. But you can definitely get them and your. Um, um, during your master's. Like I mentioned, you know, I wouldn't be um, in graduate school if I did it, if I didn't have one. Are assistantships graduate per semester or once given assistant? You know, from, yeah, really good, really good question. Um, 
it just depends on the university. <laughs> I know that's not what you wanted to hear. My um, university, um, I have it for two years, which is um, the limit amount of time, is the amount of time that students are in um, graduate school. And usually on maybe your graduate school, the university's graduate school website, they may have a tab for grad citizenships and it'll, um, it'll have this information about how long these GA positions are. Um, I've seen other universities offer it on a case by or semester by semester basis. And I think this is just to, I guess, keep encouraging um, students to work very um, hard um, in their fields. And also, you know, some students may receive, may not be able to work for the two years that a graduate assistantship is open for. Um, so by having it, um, I guess, semester by semester helps eliminate um, uh, this problem. So how can you um, access uh, the lectures? Um, available, they should they'll be posted on the Education USA Kazakhstan YouTube page. But I'll send you, I'll send my email in the chat, which is I'm help. Um, uh, more than um, I'll be more than glad to send you the PowerPoint. Um, because I know there's a lot of embedded links, a lot of examples, so you can just kind of see what these positions are, what they look like. Um, and if you have any other information, um. Um, I can send it to you as well. I'll be happy to help. Um, if you want to apply for a PhD um, chemical engineering, yeah, I mean, if you're applying for you know a PhD, you know, being very um, careful, specific, you know, contacting maybe professors um, that you would like to work with. This will give you, you know, competitive advantage if you can add that into your application. Um, my supervisor, who's actually going to be coming on, you know, in two weeks, um, you know, she, she did research on the university and the professors and added that into her application, like her uh, letter of her intent. Um, or a statement of purpose. And this, you know, helped her secure a um, position um, at the university. Um, the professor, um, I guess, obviously they can't offer the scholarship. Well, I guess they can, um, but it's not just, it'll just not just fall on their, uh, their, um, their responsibility. They choose like a board. So those multiple ones, but make a connection with that one person um, will give you a, a better um, better chance of securing a scholarship than if you didn't um, contact anyone. And if you have previous uh, research work, um, this will definitely give you a competitive advantage. So really hard to get, you know, a assistantship being in a PhD student if you didn't do anything um, during, you know, your master's um, your master's, uh, your time being studying your master's. Where is the um, best place to search for internships? That's a good question. Um, I kind of hit on, you know, all the places uh, to, um, you could look at. Um, LinkedIn um, is a great place um, and different websites, uh, web pages at the university. So the Universities, you know, financial aid website, um, the graduate school um, website, the specific colleges website. Um, there are a lot of places um, to search for these opportunities. Uh, contacting these international admissions um, recruiters, um, that for me, that would probably where I would start. Um, in, in the um, presentation, I had it as an embedded link. Let me see if I can go, go back and um, find it. Um, yeah, let me see if I can open this one. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, this is Harvard, um, but, you know, they have specific um, people, you know, that are going to help you with the admissions process. Um, not everyone at the university is a professor. Um, they have specific, you know, support staff uh, that'll help you the admissions process, but also once you get in the university. So I would, this for me, this would be step one is to contact, um, network with uh, these people. Um, Um, research, I get assistantships um, for PhD students. Let me go back and I'll show you kind of an example. Um, not every university offers, you know, PhD programs, as I'm sure you know. Um, yeah, here you go. So open up an example of a uh, research assistantship. Mm. Hmm. I guess it does. It's not working. But um, I mean, reaching out to the faculty admissions office staff. Um, and also, if that, if all felt, if all else fails, you know, if you can just search so and so university research assistant positions, um, opportunities will come up. Just make sure when you're looking at them, it's from the university. It's not like on some uh, job board site, unless it's like a LinkedIn, something that's real uh, mainstream trustworthy. Um, making sure it's from the university, you know, that they have these positions uh, open. But I mean, there's certain, I mean, there are definitely um, uh, places to search for research assistantships, especially if you've already, um, if you've done some. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, anyone can receive scholarships. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter what level um, of study I mean, you're pursuing. Unfortunately, the assistantships are just open for, you know, your graduate school masters um, and so on. This specific, you know, uh, presentation was specifically um, for graduate students, but if you're looking for, you know, opportunities um, for undergrads, you can send me an email um, and we can, uh, I can, I can see if I can help you. And I'll pull up my, and this right here on the screen is my email. So you can send me uh, any questions um, you may have. And yeah, I see, I guess, uh, Sana, um, you raised your hand. Did you have a question? Mm, hello. Yes, please. Thank you for this webinar, Jeffrey. It was really helpful. And uh, thank you for the websites that you have provided. I just wanted to say that uh, thanks for your webinars. I was admitted to three universities for the Masters of Public Administration in the United States. That's the Syracuse University, University of Michigan, and Penn State. But unfortunately, Syracuse University, that was my number one um, didn't provide me any uh, financial aid. I guess that's why, because they're number one in public affairs and public administration. And um, yeah, so I guess that's a highly competitive college school. Um, yeah. The second one, Penn State, uh, I wanted to apply for the graduate assistantship there. And um, because their graduate citizenship uh, cover full tuition and give a stipend about $2,000 per month. But um, I have no idea uh, during the application process and after I was admitted to the university, they always ignore me or just uh, answer me, respond to me uh, very late. And um, I asked them about graduate citizenship and they just responded to me very late when uh, graduate assistantships were all uh, awarded to other students. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And um, they uh, requested the GRE for the graduate assistantship and it was not mentioned anywhere on their website. And 
it was said everywhere that um, GRE is optional for this year. So, um, yeah. The third, uh, um, the third one that is left is the University of Michigan. Um, so um, they um, uh, haven't provided me with any financial aid too, but uh, they have a graduate student research assistantships there. And I have already applied for one of them. That's the public motivation research. And I really like this research, but uh, it's only for fall and winter semester. And um, the total costs that I can get from this uh, graduate student research assistantship is about $14,000. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm just looking for some variants. Maybe I could do some else and can find uh, another scholarship or fellowship or something like this or I just should give up and apply for the next year or maybe it's absolutely <laughs> impossible just to get the full uh, tuition financial aid for the master's degree because yeah I mean one thing I recommended you know have you ever considered maybe um like stacking like scholarships. So just because you have a GA position doesn't mean that's all you have to have. Maybe you, it can be applied along with something else. Um, so not looking at like one scholarship that covers um, every, you know, everything, but maybe it can be um, applied with something else, like another type of scholarship opportunity. Um, you know, and a lot of, there's a lot of other scholarship opportunities that offer just like a little bit of money, um, but that little bit of money can make a, a large um, difference. Um, but I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, uh, I'll be happy to help you if you just want to send me an email, which I know that's probably not what you want to hear, uh, yes, <laughs> because please. that's what you've been yeah, doing to other you. people, and okay. they haven't, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, congratulations, I mean, congratulations, I mean, that's something to be proud of, is that you mm, accepted to really, really, you. <laughs> thank you, and, um, I have just one more question, uh, the University of Michigan, uh, I, can apply for some scholarships uh, right now. And um, they're just asking me for a scholarship essay. And it said only that uh, the that scholarship essay should not exceed 350 words and nothing mm -hmm. else. Uh, just what should I write about that? As a civil servant, my salary is only three hundred dollars per month, and that's why I cannot afford the full tuition. Or <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, good question. I mean, I mean, let me let me let me think. I mean, just brainstorming about you know what you can provide for the program um professors maybe in that program that you look forward to working with um and i'm trying to think else off the top of my head um just kind of general um just information that you would think give you competitive advantage yeah. i can't i can't think of anything and i'll um yeah, if you just, I know you don't want to hear it, but if you just email me, it'll give me more um, time to kind of search um, kind of what to include in that, you know, store, uh, short statement. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, I will just email you a little bit later. Thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you. So yeah, and I'll, I'll, help. I'll, and I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you know. <laughs> And um, someone asked, can I show you a good CV and personal statement examples, um, how to write good research proposals? If you email me, I can send you some good examples, um, but I believe on, or, and also I've given presentations about good examples. If you email me, I can send you that information and they might be um, recorded, those presentations might be recorded and posted on the Education USA um, Kazakhstan uh, YouTube page. When do um, usually the citizenship vacancies open? A lot of them tend to open you at the end of the spring semester. So which is around this time. 
most students tend to graduate, you know, in the uh, end of the spring semester. So that's when a lot open them, but they usually open at the end of every semester is usually when they're going to be open. So I guess around November, December, the end of the fall semester, um, and the, uh, I guess, April, May, the end of the spring semester. Um, are there any assistantship programs at your, your university? Yeah, so I mean, there's plenty. Um, there's plenty, there's opportunities and these are posted like they would be a job. So on the Troy University, I think the website's like Troy University Jobs, the Troy University Human Resource webpage. Um, and there's a list of just opportunities. Um, and, but like I mentioned, you know, my university is not really like a research university. So there's not that many research assistant um, positions, um, but there, um, there are plenty of, you know, graduate administrative positions and some graduate uh, teaching positions as, as well. Is it compulsory to work after the bachelor's graduation in order to have higher chances to be admitted to the master's? No, not necessarily. I mean, there are a lot of, um, people, um, it's not compulsory to work, but I think, you know, internships while you're in bachelor, uh, bachelor's and just extra experience will help, will help you. Um, it's not compulsory. Um, I mean, I got admitted to my master's without necessarily having a lot of work experience. Um, but um, I think it'll certainly give you competitive advantage, especially applying to really, you know, high ranking universities. Um, Can I recommend universities for a chemical engineering PhD program? No, that's a really good question. I don't have, um, I can't off the top of my head. Um, I would just have to search, you know, universities, chemical engineering programs. Um, and these chemical engineering is probably gonna be your larger universities. I know Troy um, doesn't have a program, so, um, yeah, you know, maybe I, let's see if I can just search. Um, um, Yeah, so I mean, here it just kind of show up a list of um, universities. Um, Georgia Tech, I mean, that one's near me. That's super, super, um, super, super good. In Atlanta, really high ranking. Um, MIT, um, any, any university, especially that ends with the word tech, um, is going to specialize in engineering, technology, things like that. The average cost of community college, I, you see, I'm not exactly sure um, about that one. I would have to do research to find that out. Um, if you wanted to send me an email, um, I could probably, you know, provide you the information, but I think just kind of searching around, um, you can, uh, you can be able to find kind of the average cost. And I think um, Education USA did do a community uh, college, um, series or uh, um, event. Um, so there might be a presentation um, uploaded um, on the YouTube page or you can contact, you know, Rashawn and she might have the uh, information for that she could um, provide to you. So sorry, I don't, I don't have the, I don't know the exact um, cost. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, Rashawn's pro providing some really great um, information uh, information to look for chemical engineering schools. USA, uh, US News is a really good one. Forbes, um, they have a lot of good information. The Princeton Review also has a lot of good um, information. So, you know, looking uh, for articles from those resources are really, really um, helpful.
Let me see if I can open um, what uh, the USA News um, one. Yeah. So here, US News, um, best chemical engineering programs, MIT, um, California Institute of Technology, University of Cal California, Berkeley. Um, so yeah, using this, this uh, resource is really helpful for looking for programs, advice uh, for studying abroad as well. So the US News um, is very, will be very, very helpful. Are there any other um, questions anyone else has? Um, I don't know any information about the uh, can, uh, a Canadian education system, but I do um, recommend checking that EDU Pass website that I talked about, I showed, because it looks like I think they do have some um, information about studying in Canada, um, as well as the US. And same thing, I think inter internationalstudents.com, I think it even gave you um, the option of choosing like where you are studying, you know? So you maybe go down and um, um, search, you know, Canada, and we'll give you some here, like Canadian Journal Scholarship. So, I mean, these websites just don't help you study abroad in America, but also, you know, study in an English speaking country such as like America, um, Australia, Great Britain, Canada as well. Yeah, and like Rashawn, you know, she has, um, she's also, she knows a lot, you know, she's very, very good and knows a lot of information. Um, since she's posting that in the chat as well. Um, because I, unfortunately, I don't know much about um, the Canadian education system. Any uh, other questions? Yeah. Oh. I was actually asking the same question if there are any questions. <laughs> well, I, I just want to add, if you don't have any questions now, the next two weeks are going to be specifically set up to answer questions. Um, next week is going to be a graduate school roundtable where students, um, they work, some of the students work uh, that are going to talk worked as GAs, um, not just graduate administrative assistants like me, but maybe also TAs and research assistants at different universities. So they may have some different perspectives on um, how to find these opportunities, um, what they entail. And then the next week is going to be an international student advisor, which helps students, you know, I guess once they're already admitted to the university at the university studying, and then an international um, recruiter, admissions recruiter who knows kind of everything about the admissions process and helps students um, come study at uh, Troy University. So um, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can send me, send me them um, in my email. And I can make sure to write those down so they'll be answered, you know, the next coming weeks. Um, and yeah. how you wrote a research proposal. Um, that's a really good question. That's, that's a really good question because that's actually what I'm doing now for one of my classes. Um, <laughs> and specifically, you know, um, if you email me, yeah, I'll, if you email me, I'll send you that information. Um, because I, you know, everyone else, I'm sure it's getting late there, and um, you know, everyone's getting ready for bed. <laughs> but if you email me, I'll I'll send, I'll send you kind of information because I'm working on it as well. <laughs> thank so, you. So, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you for everyone for coming. Um, and I hope to see you all in the next uh, two weeks. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>